Welcome folks to my new video in my machine learning series. Today we're going to focus on building a flight predictor in under 15 minutes with Azure Machine Learning and Keras. Uh, first we want to grab some flight delay information. You can get this from the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. Let's get January's flight delay information. We'll select year, month, day of month, day of week here. Let's get the carrier. Um, we don't need the origin airport IDs. We just want the origin itself and the destination. We don't care about those IDs. So let's go grab those. Um, then we want the scheduled departure time, uh, the delay that happened. There's other options you can look at as well. Similarly, we want the scheduled arrival time and the actual arrival delay. Cancelled, if the flights were cancelled, we want the scheduled elapsed time, perhaps get the distance group, this grouping of distance between airports. And then if it was diverted as well, let's go download that and uh, take a look and see what it looks like. All right, let's switch over to Azure MLS Workbench. This is the uh, new workbench from uh, Azure. Uh, basically, you can use this to uh, create your machine learning projects. Let's create a project here called Predict Flight Delays. Choose a location for it. Let's choose Blank Project. You can see there are a few other options, but let's just do Blank Project because we're not doing any uh, predefined projects here. Within here, you can take a look and see there's the various asset it creates, creates out the box. Um, we'll touch on those in another video, but for today, we'll just start here. Let's load in our data. It's a text file, a CSV file. So let's go browse for that. Um, let's go locate that and let's pull that in. You'll notice right away that it detects it's a CSV, comma delimited. It shows you the field. It's also detected the column names from the field from the file, which it grades. It's also tried to ascertain the data type for those as well. Hitting next here, this is important. Uh, make sure you choose a good sampling strategy. I'm going to do random 10,000 rows from this. There's about 300,000 rows, I think, in this file. So we'll just choose 10,000. We'll do them randomly across the file. So it'll go ahead and sample those and pull that data in for us. And at this point, we have a nice set of data uh, that's ready to start being manipulated. As we all know, data preparation is key when we're doing machine learning. So let's first create a data preparation package. This allows us to record all of the data preparation steps to then apply to the data um, again and again if we wanted to, and also across all of the data. First, let's remove this random column at the end. Not sure what that's there for. And then let's take a look at these columns here. So we've got month and year. Let's take a look at the statistics for this column. Um, see if there is anything beyond just January in here. If you look, see minimum and maximum are both one. So these are just January. And we know the year is just 2017. So let's remove those. They're not going to really help with our predictions. Now let's take a look at um, doing a little bit more complex things. This is one of the cool things with uh, Azure Machine Learning Workbench. Let's derive this column by example. We want to extract out from the departure time uh, the hour because we want to create buckets for hours. And we just give it examples of how that works. And you can see it learns very quickly how to do that. Uh, so at this point, we've created a new column. We're going to call this column um we'll call this departure hour i think um these are buckets for that and you see it's very very quick to kind of create that based off of that starting column we'll do the same for the arrival uh time the scheduled arrival time so again we'll just give it an example of how we're looking at it it looks at kind of the data and applies what it thinks makes sense you might need to give it a couple of examples you notice here from midnight it doesn't have zero so it doesn't understand that um so we have to add that in that was something we might have missed on the departure delay column um, so maybe we really need to go back and, and fix, fix that. So let's go back to the departure hour column. There's a couple of missing values. They're probably because of that midnight thing. So let's go replace those in the tool with zero here. So at this point, our departure hour and our arrival hour buckets are created. Uh, let's go remove the original columns because we don't need those anymore. We're not going to use them in our, in our training and modeling. Okay, so now we have done that. Um, another thing we want to be able to do here is uh, filter uh, and remove cancelled and divided flights just to remove noise from our data that we don't care about for now. Um, we don't want divided or cancelled flights. So let's just go filter our data sets. You'll notice on the right, all the steps are there. So if something goes awry, you can move back to a previous step and it doesn't affect the underlying data source. Now let's go explore this data file in our notebooks. So it's really cool. You can right click, explore a notebook and right within Azure Machine Learning Workbench, you can start your Jupyter notebook and start interacting with this data. It gives you the commands out of the box to start interacting with it. And you can see here, the package is imported and here's that data set right within my Jupyter notebook that I can then start building models for. We're going to use Keras for our deep learning on this. Uh, so let's import those here. We're using TensorFlow as the backend. You could certainly use CNTK if you wanted to as well. All right, now let's take a look at our data and maybe do a bit of a manipula manipulation on this. Um, I noticed I've still got the cancelled and diverted columns. I should have dropped those in the preparation file, but let's just drop them right here. We don't need those for this data set. So let's go ahead and drop those. All right, so we also need to clean up a little bit here. We notice a couple of the columns, day of week and day of month, coming in as 
uh, not ints. So let's just convert those to integers to remove kind of that point zero. Not really necessary as much in this data set, uh, but just shows you that th these are things you can do right within the Jupyter Notebook as you would do um, in your Jupyter Notebooks that you might be using. So just kind of clean these up a little bit, we'll just kind of map those out and just uh, convert those to ints just to make the data a little bit cleaner here. All right, now we want to go ahead and um, create a, I think we want to go ahead and create our label column here. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we're based off the delay flag. And let's just say, we'll create a label saying if the flight's arrival is delayed for more than 10 minutes, we'll say that flight was delayed. We'll not look at departure delays for now. So we'll create a new column called DF, uh, we'll call it delayed. And here we're going to just use a filter. Uh, and on conditional logic within that, we'll just say, uh, using a conditional statement, we'll say, let's say if it's if arrival is delayed for more than uh, or equal to 10 minutes, uh, then flag it to one, otherwise set it to zero. Let's just take a look at that to make sure it's working quite well. So we'll just grab the um, head of this. And let's see. So if we look here, we've done that. Uh, we'll see a new column called delayed, and we'll see what that one's saying. It's delayed, it's four to six minute delay on arrival. Perfect. Um, so let's go, go ahead and drop those columns now, arrival delay and departure delay, because we're not going to use those further in this data set, they're going to just make be noise, we already have our label columns, so we don't need those. Alright, so now at this point, um, we can now create some dummy fields from the categorical columns that we have. So basically, take some of the categories that we have and create a set of dummy columns off of those. Let's define which of our dummy columns, dummy fields we want to use, or our categorical that we want to do this approach for. So things like arrival hour, uh, departure hour, for delay hour, uh, sorry, departure hour, for example. Um, destination, day of week, day of month, are all possible options for this. These are things that have discrete values, discrete set of values that we want to convert into these columns. And then it'll basically create a column for each of the values and assign zero or one based on whether the value is that. Uh, destination origin, distance group is another good one. And then carrier is a good one as well. So let's define that here. So having done that, let's... Um, Go ahead, loop through all of those, and basically just get the call the panda function get dummies on those for each of those columns. Uh, we'll keep the name prefix on each of them. We won't drop it. We'll then concatenate the results into our original data set. And let's just take a look and see how that looks. So here you can see, for example, distance group was created one for each column for each distance group and put a zero or one based on whether the value is that. Now when, you, when it looks like it worked, we'll go drop those. So here we're just calling df drop on all of those dummy fields. Now we're in a position to split this into data and label sets. So data is everything but the label, which is delayed. So let's get all the columns but that. And then for labels, let's just create a, uh, get that delayed column. Let's take a look at the size of our training data. This will be, uh, let's say 80% will do for training. Let's make that int, about 7,800 rows. The rest will be used for test data. Now let's categorize our um, labels using the two categorical function here. And we'll say there's two categories, delayed or not delayed. Right, let's split it into training and test data. So we'll use train size um, as the number to kind of split this. And we'll split both the data and the label sets into training and test data. This will give us a nice set of data for training and testing. All right, so we're in a great position now to start creating the model. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Let's define a couple of... Um, variables to begin with, batch size, which will be, let's say, 100 for this. Um, that's how many to pull each time, and then how many times to loop through the data, let's say three, because it's a small data set. Let's take a look at the train data shape, because we'll need this when defining our input layer. Let's go ahead and define the Keras model here. This is pretty straightforward. It'll be a sequential model. We'll add our parapas layer, uh, make it a dense layer, um, and then set the input shape to be 603 based on the shape we had before. Let's define an activation function for this. We'll use sigmoid, could use others. Let's add a dropout uh, layer here uh, to prevent overfitting. And let's create our final layer here, the output layer. And there's two classes coming out of it, so that's why we have two there. And we'll use the activation function softmax on that. Let's go ahead and compile this. Uh, set the, the loss uh, model up to uh, categorical cross entropy here. As other options we could use, we can set the optimizer to be um, Adam here. So let's go ahead and define that. And then let's just set the metrics that we want to collect and look at. Uh, accuracy really is the only one you'd want to use here. And then at this point, let's go ahead and train our model. Uh, let's define a variable and call model.fit here. Um, and then start training it, passing the training data, the labels, passing the batch size and the epochs that we defined. Set verbosity to see 
see what's going on. Let's set it to one, and then just set the validation split here to 0.1. This point, let's go and run, and you'll see it runs really quickly uh, because the data is really small and you've got 10,000 rows. Um, and now let's go evaluate this against our test data. You can see overall in, in the training, it seemed to be performing quite well. Accuracy was about 0.84. Let's go look at the results from using our test data. This is data the model hasn't seen yet. So run through that. Let's print out uh, some metrics on this uh, and just see how, how kind of this is performing against that set of data that it hasn't seen. So you see the test accuracy is pretty good, 0.84, and the test score is pretty good, 0.28, not too bad. Um, if we've trained it more, it might have gotten better, but you'd have to be careful of overfitting, etc. So here, let's just take a look at the true positives and true negatives, etc. Um, create a predictions object and, and assign uh, the results from model.predict against the test data. We'll kind of map the results of that against the actual results from the test labels. It's about thousand something rows. Let's print out the results of that. As you can see, true positives look pretty good. Um, there is no false positives, so it's predicting delays quite well. True negatives is predicting quite well. There's about 297 false negatives so in terms of saying it didn't get delayed. So overall, it looked like it predicted things quite well. Um, so now that really wraps up this session and hopefully you enjoyed it. You can see very quickly you can create um, some complex models very easily with Keras and Action Machine Learning workbench to do data manipulation. Hope you enjoyed this and watch out for more videos coming soon. Thank you.